Hey there, this is Brother Clinton. Welcome to my office once again. Praise the Lord. It is the seventh day of the week, the 22nd of July, the year of our Lord, 2017, 57, 77. You know, I got a letter just now from a young brother who is a, a believer in Jesus Christ, and I've spoken to him several times before. He's a blessing. And he wrote to me and he asked me a question. And before I share with you a couple of sentences out of his letter, I just want to kind of set the stage for what's going on here without mentioning the people that he's talking about because I don't want to call any attention to them or, or have people follow after them because they're deceiving people. But this young brother was watching a YouTube video where one person was interviewing another person, and the interviewee was making a point that, well, he was talking about something that people call the rapture, and he was making the point that um, when the rapture happens, that those people who are in Jerusalem will be taken up, and those people who are not in Jerusalem will not be taken up, uh, and they'll be left behind to go through great tribulation. And this young brother was writing to me asking me if this is true. So I'm going to read to you a couple sentences out of his letter. He says, It's my understanding that this man is saying that if we are not in Jerusalem on a specific time frame, that we will be left to go through tribulation. It's all so confusing. Do you have any knowledge on this? It's interesting because he makes good points, but I can't figure out what happens in the end times. And then he says, thanks so much. Hope you are well. And thank you for those well wishes, little brother. Here's the thing. <clears throat> there are so many teachings in, in so-called Christian circles today. I call them smoke screens. And they are there for the purpose of causing deception and confusion. And, you know, when I was first coming up in the Lord, it was books. Everybody had this book and that book by this author and that author. I'm talking about in, in Christian circles. And, you know, people would come to me all the time, you got to read this book. Man, you got to read this book. I, you know, God revealed to me so much through this book. But I came to find out through process of time that most of the time when people said God revealed something to me by this book, it wasn't God that revealed anything to them. It was the, the tactics, the, the deceptive tactics of the author that caused them to be persuaded of a certain thing, which was, in fact, error. Okay, because God doesn't reveal error to his people. God reveals the truth to his people, and God reveals the truth to his people when we read his word and seek him in prayer, and when we obey his word, of course, because a good understanding of all they that do his commandments. And those that read the word of God and do not obey the word of God bring deception and blindness upon their own selves. Having said that, there was a time a long time ago, maybe... I don't know, 20 years ago, when there was a dissension in, in religious circles that I was in. I won't call it the church because there are many different denominations around and, and people with different you know denominational backgrounds and opinions and such like that. But there were several opinions going around about the thing that is called the rapture. And some people were saying it was before the Great Tribulation. Some people were saying it was going to be after the Great Tribulation. And some people say it would be in the middle of the Great Tribulation. You know, the people that argue about pre-trib, post-trib, and mid-trib. Um, and I, I'm not any one of those people. I don't argue about any one of those things. Um, but having said that, when, when I was in the midst of that, and having been in the Lord maybe two years, three years, four years, something like that, having read through the Bible, you know, maybe five or ten times completely, those things were very confusing to me. And so I made a decision. I made the only... The only thing that I could consider to be a wise decision concerning that issue, I decided concretely to withdraw myself from all those people, from all those opinions, from all those books, uh, from all those radio sermons, from everybody's opinion, and I decided to go into my room with my Bible and nothing else and search the scriptures. Okay, And I did that for, I don't remember now how many days it was, maybe three, four, five days, or it didn't take long, uh, searching the scriptures, because I already knew the scriptures. I mean, I already read through the Bibles many times, so I knew pretty much, you know, what parts of the Bible were, were talking about that, that kind of thing. And I searched the scriptures, and I came to a concrete, definite conclusion. I got my answer from God. And I got my answer from God like 20 years ago, and there's been a lot of people that have tried to convince me otherwise of their opinions and all that stuff, uh, and they use this scripture and that scripture, but they don't use the whole counsel of scripture. You know, they, they misinterpret one portion of scripture and ignore another one in order to establish a, <clears throat> a doctrine that's not in the scripture. 
And that's very dangerous. And the only way that you're going to avoid that is to do what I did and what I still do when I have something like that come up. When I, when I have people on my left saying this and on my right saying that and I'm not really sure which one is true, I withdraw myself and I go to God and I stay there until I get my answer. That's, you know, that's, that's the answer. That's the only way that you're going to know. For you, little brother who wrote, that's the only way that you're going to know. There are a plethora and a multitude of people, especially on YouTube, who are preaching and teaching lies. And they don't, most of them don't know that they're lying. So maybe some of them do, uh, but I, I tend to believe that most of them don't. They've just been deceived, and so they're deceiving others. And these people that were that were on this YouTube channel telling people with a straight face that when Jesus Christ comes for his people to catch them up into the clouds to meet him in the air, that only the ones that are in Jerusalem at that time are going to be taken up and the rest shall be left to go through great tribulation. That's just perfectly ridiculous. That's just perfectly ridiculous. And I answered this brother with one verse of the scripture and I'm gonna show it to you just to make an example of this one particular thing. It's, it's uh, written in 1 Thessalonians chapter four verse 17. And it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right? Now, it's perfectly simple. We, then we which are alive and remain, we is referring to Paul himself and the people that he was writing to, which was the church of Jesus Christ in Thessalonica. Okay? It wasn't the church in Jerusalem. It was the church in Thessalonica. Okay, um, And he said to them, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, them meaning those who had already fallen asleep in Jesus Christ, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then he said, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Nowhere in the Bible does it say anything about us having to go to Jerusalem in order to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. That's perfectly ridiculous. And the people that are preaching such things are deceived, and they're deceiving other people because the people that they're deceiving don't know the Scripture. And so, as I've said many times before, my young brothers and sisters, all my brothers and sisters, whether you're, you know, this is your first week in the Lord or whether you've been serving the Lord for 20 years, um, the only way that you're going to know the truth is to search the, the Scriptures and to know the truth for yourself. It doesn't matter how great your pastor is. It doesn't matter how much he knows. It doesn't matter how long he's been studying the scripture. It doesn't matter how long you've been sitting under his ministry. Even if he is preaching the truth, you know, which is highly unlikely, but it is possible. Even if he is, and I say that because most professional pastors out there are not teaching the truth. Okay? In some things, yes. In many things, no. And so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how great your pastor is. It doesn't matter how great uh, anybody is. It doesn't matter how much truth anybody speaks. You know, I speak the truth of the Word of God on this channel as well. And there's teachings on this channel about the things that, that the Bible says about the end times. And they are true according to the Word of God. But the only way that you're going to know... See, if you listen to me preach to you something from the Word of God, and it's different from something that, that someone else preaches who also says that they're a minister of God, how are you going to know who's telling you the truth? You can't judge who's telling you the truth by the one who seems more convincing because that could get you into error. The only way, the only way, the only way, my friend, my brother, my sister, the only way that you're going to know the truth, the only way that you're going to know who's telling you the truth is to know the truth for yourself. You see, there are no shortcuts. And I know that we live in a, in a, in a, in a I want it fast, you know, instant gratification microwave generation where we want, you know, popcorn in 30 seconds. We don't want to cook it on the stove. We want to put it in the microwave. You know, we don't have 15 minutes to wait, right? We're going to starve to death if we don't have popcorn in two minutes. So, you know, and, and we have everything instant, instant gratification, instant coffee, instant this, instant that, instant pictures, you know. Um, just instant communication. I mean, some of these things are really nice to have, but we, we have become so conditioned by these things that we have forgotten what it means to seek the Lord. Now, let me share with you something very special that I don't ever want you to forget. Okay, I'm going to give you a key. Hold out your hand. Here's a key. Seeking the Lord means turning off your computer and opening your Bible. Okay, that's what seeking the Lord means. Let me say it again so it will enter into your heart. Seeking the Lord means turning off your computer and opening your Bible. Okay? 
Now, there can be some resources online that can be very helpful. There, can also, there are also many more resources online that are very damaging. Okay? Seeking the Lord means turning off your computer and opening your Bible. Remember the Bible, a paper book that has words written in it that are from God, given by inspiration from God? This is where you seek God, in your Bible and on your knees. Can you see my knee? There it is. In your Bible and on your knees. You see, a very wise brother once said to me, we don't need theology. All we need is wordology and neology. And that's one of the most profound things that I've ever heard in my life, and I, I carry it with me to this day. Don't seek God on YouTube. Okay? Now, I'm here on YouTube preaching the Word of God. I'm called of God to bring the Word of God to the churches. And so I'm not discouraging you from watching the things on this channel. In fact, I would encourage you to watch things on this channel. But I tell you, just like anyone else, it, it, how should I say it? But I tell you that in this particular way, you're not going to know that I'm telling you the truth any, any more than you know if someone else is telling you the truth, except you know the truth for yourself. And I'm always saying on, on these videos, I'm giving you the truth of God's Word, but you need to search the truth for yourself. Okay, you can't stand before men and say, Brother Clinton says that that's wrong. I rebuke you in the name of Brother Clinton. What's that going to do? <laughs> it's going to make them laugh. It's going to make the devils laugh. Because Brother Clinton is nothing. But Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And this word is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So search the scriptures for yourself, and then you will know the truth. Do you want to know what's going to happen in the end times? You can know what God has revealed to men concerning the end times. How? By opening your Bible and reading it, and doing what it says, by obeying God and searching the scriptures. You see, and it doesn't come in 30 seconds. It doesn't come by clicking on a YouTube video. You know, what's going to happen in the last times? Oh, God gave me a dream, and this is what's going to happen in the last times. And people love to click on that garbage because it's dramatic. And people love drama. You know, people love television shows about, you know, watching other people get arrested and watching other people get run over by cars and watching other people get beat up. You know, watching other people get knocked out. Views like that on, or videos like that on YouTube have millions and millions of views because people love to watch that stuff. And, and people make videos saying, well, I had a dream, a prophetic dream. All you have to do is put prophetic dream in the title of your video, and in a couple of days it will have thousands and thousands of views because people love to watch that stuff. But that's not how you seek God, my brothers, my sisters. That's religious entertainment for lost people. All right? You don't need to seek God by other people's visions and revelations. You need to seek God in His Word. And God has set in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. Okay? God has put teachers and pastors and ministers in the church to teach the people for the edifying of the body of Christ until we all come together in the fullness of the knowledge of God. But everybody who says that they're called of God to be a pastor or a teacher is not necessarily so. And the only way that you're going to know which men are men of God, called of God, and which men are wolves in sheep's clothing, or just some fools that, you know, just enjoy hearing themselves speak, and so they, they created their own television channel on YouTube because it's free. The only way that you're going to know the difference, my friend, my brother, my sister, is by searching the scriptures. How many times have I said this in this short video, 13 minutes and 40, 50 seconds? And I need to keep drilling this into you because it's the only way. You know, a lot of you write to me and you ask me questions because you know that I understand things in, uh, that are related to the Scripture. And I praise God for that. I praise God for this ministry and that, that He has enabled me to labor in the Word and, 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 in, and in doctrine. But how do I know these things? Do I know these things because I'm any better than you? No. No. Do I know these things because, because God loves me more than He loves you? No, of course not. How do I know these things? Because I've spent time in the Scripture. Because I've opened the Word of God, turned off my computer, opened the Word of God, and spent time with God in His Word. You know, and, and the things, most of the things that I know, I, I, I learned from God before I ever even knew how to operate a computer. You know, back in the 90s and the 2000s. But um, this is the point of this video. Okay, the only way that you're going to know what's going to happen in the end times, as far as what, what those things that God has revealed 
is by searching the scriptures. You're not going to find it by searching YouTube. Okay, so I'm going to say it for you one more time. This is how you seek the Lord. Turn off your computer and open your Bible. That's how you seek the Lord. And that's the point of this message. May it be a blessing to those of you who have ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen.